Hi everyone, my name is Ibrahim. I welcome you back again to our channel to watch this specialty of interest video. In this series, we choose one specific specialty where we discuss at length about the specialty training structure and different ways an international medical graduate can get into this specialty and start their career from the start to the end. Our today's specialty is emergency medicine. Let's get started. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. So emergency medicine. What is emergency medicine? Uh, it's a specialty concerned with initial diagnosis and management of the acute and urgent aspects of illness and injury affecting patients of all age groups with the full spectrum of undifferentiated physical and behavioral disorder. So it's a very mouthful definition from uh, the curriculum of Royal College of Emergency Medicine. But to be honest, in simpler terms, it's the front door of a hospital in the NHS. So it doesn't matter whether the case is a surgical case or a medical case or a pediatric case or a gynae case, it does not matter at all. It's like completely undifferentiated. That means people of all walks of life and all sorts of problems that they want to come to hospital, they have to come to emergency medicine first. So with, with any acute problem, uh, they, they present to emergency medicine. So it's the emergency medicine that receives the patient and they sort the patient out. Like they, if they think the patient needs admission, they uh, contact the medical admission unit if it's a medicine patient. They contact the surgical admission unit if it's a surgical patient. They contact the gynae, pediatric. So basically, if you're an emergency medicine doctor, you're basically seeing all types of problems, whether it's a medical or surgical initially. And sometimes the patients come with an issue where it can be solved in emergency medicine itself and the patient can go home from there. Not necessarily, it's always a conduit to admit, rather it acts as, as I said, the front door of the hospital. This whole video that I'm going to explain right now is based on the emergency medicine curriculum that has been published here in August 2016 and, and was revised in 2016. So if you're watching this video much at a late, later date, I urge you, please check GMC uh, emergency medicine curriculum and, and look at the latest upgrade. The curriculum are subject to change, so uh, please have a look at the latest one if you're watching this video at a much later date. So let's start the bare bone structure of the specialty training pathway. We will uh, discuss in detail uh, the more we go into this video, uh, but for any specialty training, obviously you have to be a medical graduate first, then you do foundation training, then you do core training, uh, and then you pass FRCM primary and intermediate during the core training before you can apply for higher specialty training. So, uh, and after higher specialty training, during the higher specialty training, you pass final FRCM, and then you obtain certificate of completion of training. So this is the bare bone structure of the whole special training pathway. So there now there are some additions to it. Addition is your core training could be a complete run through training where you don't have to go through a separate uh, recruitment round before your higher specialty training. I mean, you will be uh, advanced to ST4 uh, if you have started as a run-through training as emergency medicine. Or you can bypass foundation training by doing a non-training job and obtaining a crest form, which is a case for many international medical graduates. Also, you can obtain GMC registration here if you have not graduated from the UK Medical School. You can do a non-EM training first and then join EM training as a direct route of entry. This entire pathway exists to make way for people who have chosen other specialty training first, but they want to come back and join specialty training. So some of the specialty training, like if you have joined anesthetic training or acute medicine training, uh, or even GP training. There are some transferable competencies that can count towards this whole pathway and uh, you can obtain direct entry to ST3 level in uh, emergency medicine, bypassing the ST1 and ST2, uh, which we will talk about in a few minutes. 
and then you can join higher special training after passing FR Camp Primary and Intermediate. So there, there are multiple ways you can join this emergency medicine training and we will be discussing this all in this video. So you can see you can join via CREST and Core Training uh, or CREST and Run Through Training or you can do GMC registration then some non-EM training or EM experience from your like home country and directly enter into ST3 of emergency medicine. If you're confused about whether to do foundation training or whether to do a non-training job or to do a standalone to obtain uh, or to, how to obtain a crest form, please check this video by Dr. Ibris where she explained in detail uh, about which is the best job uh, for IMG to start with. Now let's go into a bit more detail about the core training of emergency medicine. So core training of emergency medicine is called ACCS, E-M. ACCS stands for Acute Care Common STEM. So if you can join ACCS EM as a core training, which is separate from higher cell training, or you can also join ACCS EM, which is a part of the complete run through training. So it's all determined when you join the SCCS EM training and you express your interest that I want to be a part of the whole, uh, like, you know, run through process so that you don't have to have any separate recruitment round after your CT3, rather you will be progress to ST4 uh, pending all of your competencies are achieved in your SCCS EM curriculum. But otherwise, you can join SCCS EM from the get-go uh, if you have a crest form signed. So other routes are direct route of entry. I think it's defined route of entry, uh, which directly you start from ST3. If you have some background experience in other non-EM training or even EM experience not in a non not in a training post, rather in a non-training post, you can actually collect those experiences and join emergency medicine directly into ST3 level. But the point is that you have to complete FRCM primary and intermediate both before you can apply for higher specialty training for emergency medicine, which starts at ST4 level. So for CT1, CT2, CT3, or even ST3 for DRM, all those years, your main goal is to pass these two exams and obviously achieve the relevant competencies in the curriculum of these core training modules. Now, if you compare between the SCCS EM and DREM, they're, they're, they're completely different pathway, but I just put this comparison so that you understand what are your options based on what you've done already. So if you're a fairly new graduate and uh, have just worked towards obtaining GM's registration, I think DREM I mean, defined round of entry will not be a target. Rather, your target should be SSCS uh, because you do a competitive entry first and then you join SSCS EM, pass those two exams, and then you can apply for higher specialty training in emergency medicine. But as for defined route of entry for EM, it actually applies to those who have actual more experience in emergency medicine already uh, and or, or they have started in some other specialty training and they want to switch to emergency medicine they have the option to do so. And we'll be discussing in the defined routes. What are the defined routes that you can actually use to switch your career into emergency medicine? So with defined route, you have to competitive entry into ST3 level. So ST3 is not particularly a year, rather they, they observe you for 18 to 24 months and see whether you have achieved or showed all those competencies required uh, to apply for an ST4 level. So it not necessarily it's a year of ST3, rather it's it's a period of ST3 where you're given the option to complete your FRCS primary and intermediate and achieve all the competencies that an SSCM EM would have achieved in their training. So it's like an equivalent route, but obviously SSCS is complete three years, but ST3 in this emergency medicine will not be three years because you have experience from your other defined routes already. And then you apply in this higher specialty training. So what are these defined rounds of uh, entry to ST3 emergency medicine? There are basically three routes. So route one is if you have joined UK core surgical training. So I'm not sure whether anyone who would join core surgical training will drop out or, or complete uh, not pursue. I mean, it, it depends actually. I, mean, I, I cannot say for certain. If somebody starts doing CST, completes MRCS, and they decide, no, I don't want to pursue any higher surgical training, rather I want to do emergency medicine, they can come and join. They don't have to do this SCCS EM again, rather they can join directly to DREM at ST3 level and pass the relevant FRCM primary and intermediate and be eligible to apply for higher specialty training in emergency medicine.
Route one A is if you have equivalent UK Court Surgical Training. That means you can, if you can get alternative Court Surgical Competencies signed off, even without MRCS, you'll be eligible to apply for uh, DRE EMS three specialties. And the second route basically is if you have minimum 24 months experience in any of the SCCS specialties like anesthesia, emergency medicine, intensive care medicine, or even acute medicine, of which 12 months must be in emergency medicine. So this route is basically particularly more important for many international medical graduates. I'll come around to it in a second. So all this, if you have completed any of this and you can go through recruitment and interview and join SD3 EM directly without going through uh, the SCCS EM pathway. So route two is more important because I think a lot of doctors who have home experience of doing emergency medicine and experience in other specialties like ICM or anesthesia and want to join emergency medicine in the UK, it's a very uh, like you know easy way to get those competencies equivalent to UK work and then they can join SD3 directly without having to going through the starting from the like bottom up again. Now let's a bit recap and at the same time a bit more detail about what higher specialty training of uh, emergency medicine looks like. So what we have known so far that there are three types of entry that you can do. One is SCCM core training if you join the core training module. Uh, which is could be three or four years. I think from 2021, the curriculum might change, which hasn't approved by GMC yet. Uh, but it's three years now. It, it can become four years. And within this core training, you complete your African primary and intermediate exam. And there's a competitive entry if you have taken the core training pathway to join higher specialty training, which starts from SD4. But if you have taken the run through, then, it, then there is no competitive pathway, but still you have to pass FRCM primary and intermediate. And if you have joined DREM ST3, then also you don't have to have any competitive entry, rather uh, at ST3 level, if, if you can show your competencies well enough, then you can be progressed to ST4 level. So higher special training for EM starts at ST4, which lasts for three years. And during these three years, you can actually take a subspecialty interest of any of these two, which is pediatric emergency medicine or pre-hospital emergency medicine, uh, where you will be like, you know, special interest in pre-hospital or pediatric emergency medicine. But if, you, if there is another option, uh, obviously in this period, you have to pass the final effort camp. There is another option is uh, doing an additional one year in intensive care medicine, which will allow you to obtain dual CCT in emergency medicine and intensive care medicine. So you see, if we look at this entire pathway, the entire training is basically seven years. So four years of ACCS uh, and uh, three years, that makes you emergency medicine. And if you want to become intensive, that it becomes four years, three years, and one year, so eight years of training in total. If you want to become dual CCT in emergency medicine and intensive care medicine. So a bit of about FRCM examinations. FRCM examination uh, has replaced a previous MRCM examination. So it's only FRCM. There is no separate MRCM examination. Uh, you can obtain membership because FRCM is a fellowship, but you can obtain membership if you pass FRCM primary and FRCM intermediate SAQ, and they also arrange for MRCM OSCE. So if you pass those three exams, you can actually apply for a membership for the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. But otherwise, this entire, as you have seen already, this fellowship is the only exam, uh, uh, FRCM is the only exam for emergency medicine training pathway, and they have integrated this to, to the curriculum. So FRCM final has four parts. There's the critical appraisal part, which is the SAQ as well. You have to do a QIP, you have to do a clinical SAQ and OSCE, which basically you have to take in your uh, last stage of higher specialty training. So the burning question is how competitive is SCCS EM? Uh, so you have, to, you have to remember that application does not mean that they only applied for SCCS EM. They, they could have applied for IMT, they could have applied for GP, they could have applied for SCCS anesthetics. So just because they applied for SCCS EM, that doesn't mean that they are very keen on doing SCCS EM because you can apply in multiple specialties. So in 2018, applications were 700 and the posts were 369. So it was fairly, for at least for one seat, there were two people competing. 
uh, in 2019 it was a bit high because you can see the post number decreased in 2020 uh, the post number decreased further that's why it became a bit more competitive uh, how competitive is ST3? It's the defined route of entry, ST3 directly. Uh, there's not many posts, but you can see it hasn't been that competitive in previous years, in 2018 and 19. In 2020, it became really competitive because you can see there's a decline of number of posts. Why there's a decline of number of posts? This is beyond me. I think it's based on what is the training situation and how much uh, like you know opportunities are available in the NHS to train this level of doctors it varies from time to time and as for SD4 emergency medicine the post is not many but you can see there is not many applications as well uh, because if you actually go through run through emergency medicine you're not competing for SD4 so you're automatically progressing to SD4 from SCS CT3 so there, that's that's a, a, another like you know step as well. So not many people would be joining SD4 as an SD4. Rather, they would probably have been doing SCS uh, and or SD3 defined route and then directly going to SD4 without having to compete for a recruitment round again. How much do they get paid? An emergency medicine trainee or an emergency medicine specialist? Uh, we, we say this a lot in, and we want to include this into our videos as like, you know, broadly as we can that uh, the pay for a doctor in the UK or even a trainee in the UK does not matter which specialty you do. It's, it's a nationally mandated pay scale where you get paid according to what level you work. It does not matter what kind of specialty you're working. It does not matter whether you're working in rheumatology that you will get paid less dermatology than dermatology or gastro or cardio. It doesn't matter. If you're an ST3, you get paid the same amount whichever specialty you're working in. And the specialties, the scale that I'm, the national pay scale that I'm going to show you here is for England only. So it may vary in other uh, parts like Wales or Northern Ireland or Scotland. So from ST1, the basic pay yearly is this amount, 39,467. As for emergency medicine, you'll probably be earning at least 30 to 40% uh, added more to it because you'll be working a lot of um, on calls and night shifts and out of hours but this is the basic pay for st1 and st2 level for st3 to st5 level the pay is this much the basic pay per year from st6 to st8 it increases to this much and for consultant starting salary is this much the thing is the the payment of a consultant of emergency medicine can vary a lot from hospital to hospital because the consultant jobs are, are subject to negotiation as well uh, so there is no fixed salary but this is the pay scale that this is the minimum amount a consultant would make as a starting salary what is the maximum amount i don't know <laughs> and i don't think anybody knows so for imgs what would be the pathway i think it, it's uh, i'll go a bit more in detail thinking about that img can come to the uk uh, in different stages of their career so let's say uh, they're medical graduate and they're fairly new medical graduate. I think for them, the first step would be to obtain GMC registration. So there are three ways you can, I think four ways if you take USMLE route into consideration. There are four ways you can get GMC registration. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to work towards getting GMC registration. Whichever way you get, if you can take PLAB, if you take MRCS, whichever, but you have to take, first you have to work towards obtaining GMC registration first. After obtaining GMC registration, you can start a non-training job in the NHS to get into the system, to understand how the system works, and also to get your competencies to apply for later training. If you have not done any internship, and uh, that that's the first thing, you cannot obtain full GMC registration from the get-go. You have to do foundation training in the UK, uh, after doing PLABS, getting provisional registration, and your pathway is exactly the same as of UK graduates that I've described earlier. But for international medical graduates, if you have obtained full GMC registration, you can start as a non-training doctor, then you have to work towards getting your CREST form signed. CREST stands for Certificate of Readiness to Enter Specialty Training, which is like the equivalent of foundation competencies. After you get a CREST form signed, you can join SCS Emergency Medicine, 
and within that emergency medicine training of SCCS, you finish FRCM 1 and 2, that means primary and intermediate, and then you can join higher emergency medicine training. Now, if you have obtained full GMC registration on a different pathway and you're fairly an older graduate who have experience in emergency medicine or anesthesia or ICM uh, back in home country, then the pathway could be a bit different because you don't have to go through SCCS EM, rather you can gun towards DRE EM ST3. So you can join, if you have done MRCS already, you can join a non-training job, but you still can do the crest form and join SCCS, but with the experience back in your hand, if you are qualified to apply for DRE EM specialty, you can do that and then you progress towards higher emergency medicine training. So I think I went a bit fast, but I want to emphasize that for emergency medicine training, it's 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 fairly uh, like, you know, not that competitive compared to surgical specialties, uh, but the pathways are more open. I mean, you, you can actually, especially the ST3 route entry is, is unusual for any other specialties. I think this is made to encourage a lot of other specialty trained individuals who can actually uh, have that accreditation of their competencies to this DREM pathway and join ST3 and prove their competencies in ST3 as an emergency medicine registrar and they can progress toward ST4 of higher emergency medicine training. Uh, if you're confused about what is a training or a non-training job, you can watch this video. We have discussed, I have discussed here in more detail about like, you know, what is a training job and what is a non-training job. There is another route of being a specialist directly, which is called CESR, Certificate of Eligibility of Specialist Registration. This is basically for those individuals who are working probably as an emergency medicine consultant elsewhere in the world, or who have completed all parts of FRCEM already and they have obtained the fellowship and they have breadth of experience in emergency medicine and they directly want to join the workforce of like, you know, UK or NHS as a specialist. My advice with whatever experience I have would be to actually start working because FRC, FRCEM will give you GMC registration as a registration to work. So if you obtain that first and then start working in the NHS as a ED registrar and start gathering these evidences together, you can actually apply for this eligibility. There is complete guidance by GMC, how and what you need and how you have to apply. So to give you a taste, actually, you have to, of most of the cases without FRKM, it's unlikely that you'd be allowed to be a specialist in the United Kingdom of emergency medicine. And you have to do some experience in different experience in different specialties. Like you have to have experience in ICM, in intensive care medicine, and anesthesia as well. Uh, because as a trainee, you go through those specialties as well. You have to have a logbook, which is there on uh, Royal College of Emergency Medicine website. You have to have some presentations, evidence. You have to have some courses done like ATLS, ALS. APLS, those courses done. You have to have audits done as a presentation. You have to have evidence of that audit and like, you know, presentation, all you have references from your current consultants. So all this, if you put it together, GMC has a complete guidance, as I said, how to put together a CSR application. Uh, this is particularly for those individuals and international graduates who have already are working as a consultant or have completed FRCEM all parts. So we've reached to the end of our today's video. If you have any questions regarding the pathway that I just mentioned, I know I've gone a bit fast, but I think uh, I have covered all aspects of what an emergency medicine training looks like in the UK and how an international medical graduate can join to the NHS and actually work their way uh, in the training pathway and become an emergency medicine specialist. If you have any questions, we're always happy to answer. Please ask us in the comment below. There you go. That's all about emergency medicine training pathway uh, in the United Kingdom for international medical graduates. Uh, I hope uh, I have given you all the details for you to know how to plan your career if you are interested in emergency medicine. As I said earlier, if you have further questions, please do ask. And if you have not already, please subscribe to our channel and uh, find us in other social medias like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Stay with us and have a nice day.